sixth grade, module four, lesson 21 classwork, mathematical modeling exercise. The Italian villa restaurant has square tables that the servers can push together to accommodate the customers. Only one chair fits along the side of the square table. Make a model of each situation to determine how many seats will fit around various rectangular tables. Okay, so they've shown us one table. So with one table, how many seats can we fit at each table? So there will be one chair, two chairs, three chairs, four chairs. So then with two tables pushed together, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six chairs. With three tables, there would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chairs. Four tables would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then five would be one, two. And what I'm starting to notice is that there's always two on the outside and then two for every table. So that's 12. So if we had 50, we would have 50 times two. So because we would have, that's just three, but we always have two on the outside of every table plus an extra two for the ends. So no matter how many tables, there's just plus an extra two. So that would be 102. If we had 200, that would be 200 times two chairs per each table plus the two on the ends. So that would be 402. And then if we had T, so we don't know how many tables, we would do two times however many tables we have, so two T plus the two chairs on the end. So are there any other ways to think about solutions to this problem? So just no matter what happens, there's always going to be a chair on each end, and then each table has two chairs opposite one of each other. So no matter how many tables, there will always be a chair on each end and each table has two chairs opposite each other. So they always have two chairs on the end, so one, two, and then two opposite each other. Like yeah, two on the end, and then two opposite each other for however many tables there are. It's impractical to make a model pushing 50 tables together to make a long rectangle. If we did have a rectangle that long, how many chairs would fit on the long sides of the table? So it's saying, we made a big model and this was 50 chairs or 50 tables all pushed together, saying on the long sides, so these sides, how many chairs could fit there? Well, for every table, there'd be two chairs, one across from each other. So that would be 50 times two or 100 chairs on the long sides. How many chairs fit on the ends of the long table? So no matter how many tables we push together, there's only going to be two ends, right? So there's going to be one chair on each end, so two chairs, one on each end. So it doesn't matter if we have two tables pushed together or a thousand tables pushed together, there's only going to be two ends. How many chairs fit in all? Recorded in your table. So we've already done that in 
our table. So that would be 100 plus 2 would be 102 chairs. Work with your group to determine how many chairs would fit around a very long rectangular table. 200 square tables were pushed together. So 200 times 2 plus 2 is 402 chairs. And then if we let t represent the number of square tables that make one long rectangular table, what is the expression for the number of chairs that will fit around it? So we've already done that. We said that 2 times the number of tables plus 2 would give us our chairs. 2t so plus 2. Look at example 1 with your group. Determine the cost for various numbers of pizzas and also determine the expression that describes the cost of having p pizzas delivered. A. Pizza Queen has a special offer on lunch pizzas, $4 each. They charge $2 to deliver regardless of how many pizzas, so it doesn't matter if you get one pizza or 80 pizzas. It's going to cost $2 to deliver. Determine the cost for various numbers of pizza and also determine the expression that describes the cost of having P pizzas delivered. So one pizza would cost, so it costs $4 plus the $2 to deliver. So that would be $6. For two pizzas, it would, each pizza is $4 plus the $2 delivery fee would be $10. For three pizzas, you can do there's three pizzas plus two dollars to deliver. So that's 12 plus two is 14 dollars. So let's think instead of doing four plus four plus four plus four every time, we're just doing multiples of four, so we can just multiply by four. So on the next one, if we have four pizzas, that's four times four plus the two dollars would be 18 dollars. So 10 pizzas, we have 10 times four plus 2 would be $42. 50 times 4 plus 2, 50 times 4 is 200, plus 2 would be $202. And then if we don't know the P, we have P times 4 plus 2, or we could just call it 4 times however many pizzas plus $2. What mathematical operations do you need to, per to perform to find the total cost? So what we're doing is 4 times p, so we're multiplication. And then we add the $2, so multiplication and addition. Multiply the pizzas. by four dollars and add two dollars for the delivery fee. Suppose our principal wanted to buy a pizza for everyone in our class. Determine how much this would cost. Remember it was four dollars per pizza plus the delivery fee or 4p plus 2. So this is going to be different for everyone depending on how many people are in your class. So a normal class usually has like 20 to 30 people in it. So let's just say there's 25 people in the class. So let's do 4 times 25 people plus the $2 delivery fee would be equal to 100 plus $2, or for this particular class, it would cost $102 for everyone in that class. But again, this answer is going to be different for everyone, depending on how many people are in your class. B, if the Booster Club had $400 to spend on pizza, what's the greatest number of pizzas they could order? Okay, so we know that they have $400. So... If we wanted to kind of work backwards, so 4p plus 2 needs to be, I'm going to make this an inequality. 
needs to be less than or equal to $400 because we can't go over $400. So the $2, the, um, two delivery fee is just a flat fee that we could take off. So let's say 4P is less than or equal to, if we take the $2 away from each side, that would be $398. So let's figure out how many four times what it gets us closest to $398 without going over. Let's do 398 divided by four. So four can't go into three, but it can go into 39. Four times eight is 32, four times nine is 36. Four can go into 38, again, nine times. And, oops, that should have been a 36. I already brought down the 8. So we have 2 left over. Nothing left to bring down. But what we get is 99 and 2 fourths. So they could buy 99 and a half pizzas. But I've never really known a pizza place that sells half of pizzas, maybe slices. But this pizza place doesn't do that. Or at least they haven't told us that they have. So the most pizzas they could buy would just be 99 pizzas. Because 100 pizzas would be too much if we then added on the $2 delivery. C. If the pizza price was raised to $5 and the delivery price was raised to $3, create a table that shows the total cost, pizza plus delivery, of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 pizzas. Include the expression that describes the new cost of ordering P pizzas. So one pizza would be $5 times one pizza plus the $3 delivery fee is $8. $5 times two pizzas plus the $3 delivery fee would be $13. Five times three pizzas plus $3 is $18. 5 times 4 pizzas plus $3 would be 23. 5 times $5 plus 3 pizzas would be $28. So if you notice, the only thing that's changing here every time is what's in the parentheses or the pizzas. So I'm just going to take that and replace it with P. So 5 times however many pizzas plus Three, and that gives us our expression. So 5p plus 3 tells us how many pizzas or how much it would cost for any amount of pizza. And that is the end of the lesson.